Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Minister Karya Vasim, uh, Madam Singh, Dr. Bhatia. What a wonderful occasion it is, and I think I applaud all of you for really thinking so broadly, I think in terms of really the changes one can make. Uh, what I wanted to present today, I am from University of British Columbia, and of course an ex-IITN who went to Canada many, many years ago. But I want to talk about something very different. I think I want to talk about really a major sector that is actually left isolated in our work towards improving the communities, and that's the sector of academia. And I want to describe a center to you today, I think which is actually creating, uh, I think, an example of how industry, community, and academia, which is universities, can work together to find solutions that actually can help transform communities. So this is a center called IC Impacts. This is actually out of uh, University of British Columbia, where I am. And the idea is actually social innovation through university industry community partnerships. What that means is if you recognize that there is indeed a problem to be solved, we can certainly solve that problem through uh, research. So creating IC Impacts, this big center actually was established in February 2013 as the first international centers of excellence. It's a university-led center, which is pan-Canadian and pan-Indian, so I want to describe really the work that's being done here by in institutions. And I believe it's a new model for international collaboration, which allows us to really develop solutions for problems that we have all face. And it's got a total current funding of 60 million at the moment. Now, these are partners and collaborators, so you'll notice that the partners are not just the university, but also a number of industrial uh, houses here, Starmas, Reliance, Tata's, GMR, and a number of universities here, like practically all of the IITs, are a part of the center at the moment, which are working together to actually create, create solutions in terms of really finding, our, so, so, uh, essentially finding problems to our, uh, solutions to our problems. So the three core areas that the center is working in is in, first of all, safe and sustainable infrastructure. As you know, I think Madam Singh quite, quite properly described really the problems with infrastructure and the traffic here, really. So one thing that it's doing is looking at safe and sustainable infrastructure, such as low carbon materials, sensors, and strengthening. As you know, you have these natural disasters here, and we're looking at methods of strengthening structures under earthquake, um, rock slides, those kinds of things. Water, the other area is an integrated water management. So we're looking at sensors that can actually be installed in water treatment systems or in the water distribution sensors systems, which can actually sense both chemicals and pathogens. So for example, if you have in fact a water problem or a water contamination somewhere, what you would notice that it generally takes up to 48 hours to 72 hours to detect that there is in fact a problem with the water somewhere in the system where there has a breach has occurred or there has been a, a contaminant or a pathogen has walked in. So what these sensors do actually, that they would actually be placed in a water sense, uh, in a water treatment system or in a water distribution system, and they can tell us really very quickly through a digital readout, which can be read over the internet, that there is indeed a problem, and you would be able to locate exactly where the problem is. And of course, in water treatment systems, there is a huge issue with alternative power supplies, as you know about almost close to 30,000 villages here are completely off-grid, have no power. So we're looking at water systems, water treatment systems that can be utilized or that can actually work with alternate power systems. Finally, it's in the area of public health. So what we're doing in the public health is you can get rapid diagnostics. So you're looking at basically cloud-type data, data analytics, where you're looking at data that's been placed through rapid diagnostic devices, which can actually go to small villages, where generally there is no, not even a primary health unit and working towards dengue and other malaria infectious diseases and mobile health technologies. So that these are the core areas that the center is actually working in. We have currently 38 projects across 58 academic institutions involving 66 disciplines. So those are the sort of connections. On the left you will see uh, Canada, and on the right you will see India, where we have actual uh, collaborating centers. We also have uh, units which are actually functioning here, and also partner communities that are actually working with us. So there are 91 Canadian scientists and 96 Indian scientists. But I think the idea is that we are collaborating to come up with solutions that actually go directly into the community.